Hey everybody, it's low carb and keto nutritionist Amy Berger bringing you, as always, keto without the crazy. In the interest of finally making good on my goal to have slightly shorter videos, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time right now talking about administrative stuff and things I have available. You can find everything in the notes below for this video. Um, if you are new to my channel, though, I am the author or co-author of three keto-related books, and I'm also involved in a company that's offering online courses about keto, so just look for everything down below. All right on to the show. I specifically said slightly shorter videos because this happens to be a very big topic and in the future I will try to break things up into smaller topic bits but this this will hopefully be shorter than my usual fare but maybe longer than I hope for things to be going forward. Okay such a huge topic keto women and protein. Now of course if you happen to not be a woman, if you are a man watching this video, or you identify as some other gender or what have you in the human family, a lot of what I say will still apply to you. The reason I put women in the title is because I think women tend to skimp on protein much more than men do. So with that in mind, before I get into the specifics, and I, I made notes because this is such an important topic, I got back to note taking so I don't forget anything. Keep in mind that anything I say is specific to certain situations. If, if things that you hear don't apply to you, they don't apply to you. So don't worry about it. Don't feel like you're doing something wrong if you're doing things a different way and you're happy with how things are going. So don't fix a problem you don't have. If you are happy with how keto or low carb is going for you, great. If you like the way you feel, you like the way you look, you're happy with your health status, or maybe you're not happy, but you're, you're new and you're going in the right direction. Great. If it's working, you don't have to change anything. Most of what I'm going to say is applicable to people who are not happy with how they feel or how they look or their health or certain other results that they might be getting from keto. So, Let's get to the notes. Yeah, just, I, I really can't emphasize that enough. If I say something that doesn't resonate with you, it doesn't resonate with you, that's okay. Um, so, uh, and I'll try to kind of emphasize that throughout who, who I'm talking to and what these situations are for. But um, I, I will say right off the bat here, I am mostly aiming this content, this video at women or people, but women doing keto for fat loss or general health and well-being or for a metabolic condition, which there are so many more metabolic conditions that we don't even realize are metabolic in nature, but I mostly mean things like type 2 diabetes, PCOS, non-alcoholic fatty liver, um, hypertension, dyslipidemia, like high triglycerides, low HDL, um, Oh, there's so many others, migraines, lots of other things. Anyway, let's get moving. Why, why do women tend to limit protein? And, and not just on keto, on any diet. The first reason is that for years and years and years, we have been conditioned by advice from on high, from various organizations and from horrible, misguided, misleading women's health and diet and fitness magazines, we have been conditioned to think that an appropriate amount of protein for us at a meal is about three-ish ounces, three to four ounces maybe, about the size of your palm or about the size of a deck of cards, right? And that's whether it's poultry or fish or beef or pork or what have you, you know, about a little size. Please Throw that information out immediately. It's garbage, get rid of it, delete it from your memory. You never heard it, it does not apply, it's trash. Ladies, please hear me, and men, you might as well hear me too. That recommendation has zero basis in science, zero grounding in human physiology or digestion or overall wellness, nothing. There is not a single scientific fact to back that statement up that women should have about, you know, whatever that size of 
protein per meal. So that's why women generally limit protein overall, whether they're on keto or not. Another reason is that we, we've been told, and this, this isn't just specific for women, we've been told in general that a high protein intake is bad for the kidneys, right? It puts strain on the kidneys, it stresses the kidneys or somehow. And half the people saying that don't even know what that means. Stresses my kidneys, how? Put, puts what kind of strain on my kidney? Please fill me in, elaborate on this. What do you mean by it's putting strain on my kidneys? They don't mean anything because that's also garbage nonsense with almost no grounding in science. Now, I said I'd have lots of links. I wrote a very, very long blog post destroying the myth that a high protein intake is bad for the kidneys. There may be some unique situations in people with existing severe kidney disease. And I say severe, like end stage, end stage renal failure. You might have to limit protein for a certain reason. In the absence of that, there's almost, I should not almost, there's no evidence that protein restriction is beneficial for kidney health. And there is no evidence that high protein intake is harmful for kidney health. And I, I won't say more than that, just if you wanna know more, look at the blog post. There's links to all the scientific papers in there. So if you want the actual backing, that's there. We've also been told that higher protein intakes are bad for the bones. Well, isn't that funny? Because your bones are mostly protein. Your bones are not little sticks of chalk with nothing but calcium, or maybe you've heard bones also have magnesium. They're nothing but little flimsy sticks of calcium and magnesium. What do you think those calcium and magnesium appetite crystals are wrapped around? Oh, oh, right, protein. Hmm, interesting then. And, and I know there's stuff about the acid. Protein is acidic and it leaches calcium from the bones to buffer the acidity in the blood. No, it does not. Again, I wrote a different, very long blog post demolishing that myth that high protein intake is bad for the bones. So without further ado, wasting time on that stuff, if you want to know more, read those blog posts. Getting to keto specifically, why women limit protein on keto, and men do as well, is a couple of things. Let's, uh, let's consult the notes. The first is that many people, especially if they're kind of new to keto the last couple of years, they've come to believe that their diet has to adhere to certain macros. And by macros, we mean percentages of macronutrients in the diet. Macronutrients are protein, carbohydrate, and fat. Your macros are the percentages of your total calories that come from each one of those macronutrients. For example, 70% fat, 20% protein, 10% carbs. That makes up 100%. Those would be your macros. Your, your protein macro would be 20%. However, the ketogenic diet doesn't work by macros. Macros is nonsense. I hate it. I hate percentages. I hate when people tell me their macros because oh, it's just not very good. I'll link to a video I did, and I think the title is actually called There's No Such Thing as Macros or No Such Thing as Keto Macros. Keto does not work by having a magical percentage formula of your diet. Keto works by keeping your carbohydrate really low. What literally makes a diet ketogenic is the absence of the carbohydrate, not the gobs and gobs of fat, and also not really the restriction of protein, but we'll come back to that. So if you think that your protein macro is only supposed to be X, it's 15% or 20% or like more than 15 or 20% is too high a protein macro, no, another piece of nonsense garbage that you can forget about and delete from your memory. Another reason that women tend to limit protein is uh, two things. We've heard that too much protein turns into sugar. It turns into sugar. You digest it and boom, it's sugar. No. <laughs> it's, it's the big scientific word for it is gluconeogenesis. Gluco, like glucose, neo, new, genesis, creation. The creation of new glucose, gluconeogenesis. Amino acids, which are the, the building blocks of protein. Protein are just long chains of amino acids strung together some of the amino acids that make up proteins can be converted into glucose 
under certain metabolic conditions, it doesn't happen just because you ate a ginormous ribeye steak or a ginormous piece of chicken. It just doesn't work that way. Can amino acids be converted into glucose under the proper hormonal circumstances? Yes. Is that a reason that you should be afraid of increasing your protein intake on a ketogenic diet? No. Um, I, I wrote again, so, so many links of very more than you could ever want to know about protein and gluconeogenesis. So if, if, if you're afraid of this, if this is something you've heard and you've been limiting your protein intake because it turns into sugar, please take some time and read that post. Um, the other thing is that we've heard that pro well, so, so I guess there's three things. The second one will be that protein spikes insulin. Protein is insulinogenic. That is actually true. Pro well, the, the part about protein being insulinogenic is true. Protein does not spike insulin. I, I hate that word so much. I wish we could banish it from the keto vocabulary. Protein induces a small, gentle, totally physiologically normal rise in insulin. It's not a pathological spike. It's exactly what you would expect to happen to insulin when you consume protein. We kind of want that because insulin is one way, what one of many ways that glucose can enter into your cells. Insulin also helps amino acids get into your cells. So if you want to build muscle and you want to have enzymes and hormones and all these great things that protein makes and amino acids make, you better have some insulin around. Not a ton of it all the time, but when you eat protein, you better have a little rise in insulin. This rise in insulin, this totally normal insulin effect of protein is nothing to fear. My number one recommendation, if you're concerned about this, is the video that I've linked to from Dr. Ben Bickman. He's a PhD researcher out of Brigham Young University. He's got like the most dynamite video. I think he gave the talk at Low Carb Denver. It, it was some low carb conference a couple of years ago. It's, you just look for Ben Bickman video. I think the title is Insulin versus Glucagon, the role of dietary protein, something like that. It'll blow your mind. You will watch that video and you just won't be afraid of protein anymore. So that addresses the insulin. The other reason that women and everyone tend to limit protein on keto is because we've heard that it kicks you out of ketosis. Too much protein kicks you out of ketosis. Now, because of that gentle effect that protein has on insulin, Protein can temporarily reduce your ketone level. If you eat a large chunk of protein, you probably will see a decrease in your ketone level if you're even checking. However, ladies, do you hear me and do you see me if you're watching this? I know some of you just listen on like a recording or something. Please hear me. Do you care about your ketone level or do you care about feeling well and looking good and being your best? Do you really care what your ketone level is or do you care about the results you're getting from the way you're eating? My friends at KetoGains, KetoGains.com have the greatest motto, chase results, not ketones. Remember, the effect of a low-carb or ketogenic diet, most of the effects come from the low-carbohydrate intake, not from the high ketones. So do not worry about ketones. I will come back to that, though, in a bit. Stick a pin in that. Um, yeah, do you, do you care about ketones or do you care about how you look and feel? So... And, and remember, you don't even have to be in ketosis. You don't have to have measurable ketones in your blood, breath, or urine to lose weight or to have sharp thinking or to get rid of heartburn or to reverse PCOS or any of these things. Some people just don't generate high levels of ketones and they can still get all the wonderful benefits everybody else gets from carbohydrate restriction. So now that we are not afraid of any of that, let's talk about why you might increase protein in the context of keto. Well, the first is if, now remember, and I'm gonna come back to this even more, if what you're doing now is working, 
then disregard. You don't even, I don't even know why you're watching this if, if what you're doing is working, but I'm, it's still education, all right? Because maybe you'll get to a point where it stops working. So if, if you are someone that deliberately limits your protein intake, but you feel great, you're happy with your appearance, you're happy with your health, keep doing it. I'm not here to tell you, again, I, I don't want you to fix a problem you don't have. If, however, you are trying to lose body fat on keto and you're stuck and it's, and you're, you really, you think you're doing all the right things. And if you're going for a macro, you're, you're adding a lot of fat, eating a lot of fat in order to have some kind of high fat percentage, high fat macro, and you're restricting protein in order to make all that math line up. That's got to go. Some people do really, really well with fat loss with a relatively lower protein intake and higher fat. Some people do. But if I'm not describing you, you might be better served. Like, if you're hungry, but you have it in your mind that you have to have a certain fat macro, then instead of eating more protein to satisfy that hunger, you might have a fat bomb or you might put some oil or butter in your coffee. And that, if you're gonna eat lots and lots and lots of extra fat, your body, you're already having a hard time burning the fat that's on your body. You're gonna have an even harder time if you eat more and more and more dietary fat. Your body's gonna burn, why would your body burn all your nice, beautiful stored body fat when it's got all this fat coming in right now to, to deal with? So um, that's not to make you afraid of fat, and we're gonna we'll get to that in a minute. It's not that you should eat low fat. This is still a nice, delicious, higher fat diet, but you don't have to skimp on protein. Don't eat excess fat at the expense of protein. And um, for, so, again, for some people, fat is the most satiating, meaning it fills you up and keeps you full. For many of us, it's protein. It's not really the fat. I could eat and eat and eat butter. I could drown a piece of meat in melted butter and I'm, I'm still hungry. What I should have done is had triple the amount of meat instead of more and more fat. Anyway, something that you get from the protein foods that you don't get from added fats and oils are actually nutrients and um specifically things like iron zinc and b12 and there's a whole ton of other micronutrients meaning vitamins and minerals that you'll get from you know whole food proteins that you're not going to get from coconut oil or olive oil or avocado oil or um even something like butter, but we'll come back to butter because it does actually have some nutrients. Um, lard even, depending on how the animals are raised, things like tallow and lard do have a little bit of vitamin A, vitamin K2, but I, I honestly believe that many, many women, especially younger women, reproductive age, you know, menstruating women, are either overtly anemic or like subclinical iron deficiency. And it's partly because they've made us so afraid of red meat. Red meat and shellfish are among the highest sources of iron and B12. And if you're skimping on that, you know, if you're tired, if you're fatigued, if you're just kind of down, look at the symptoms of anemia because you might even just have kind of a mild case. Um, and, and don't, don't get me started on the lab values. If you're normal, but you're at like the very low end of the normal range, maybe you would feel your best if you were like at the midpoint or higher, like the high end of the range. So just because you are not overtly deficient by some lab's definition, if you know you don't feel well, you might need to be a little bit higher for your own optimal you know, functioning. So when you eat things like beef and pork and poultry and seafood and shellfish and eggs, you're going to get a lot of these micronutrients that you're not going to get from the isolated fats and oils. And like I said, the butter, the lard, the tallow, they, they do have, you know, minuscule amounts of stuff, nothing like you're going to get from these, you know, whole food proteins. And I say whole food proteins because you can increase your protein intake with protein powders and, and other, you know, bars and stuff like that. Most of them are fortified with vitamins and minerals, but I'm just saying as if, if they weren't fortified, they would just be amino acids and nothing else. So if you're going to increase your protein intake, you are going to by default without even trying increase your intake of a lot of these vitamins and minerals. 
and let's see. So again, I don't want to make you afraid of fat because we act, keto is absolutely not a low fat diet, but it's not an all you can eat, gorge yourself on fat buffet either. And this is a big, a big um, cause for fat loss stalls that I see. In fact, check out my book, The Stall Slayer. It's at stallslayer.com. That's one of the things I address in the book is people eating a little too much fat because they're afraid of eating more protein instead. So you don't, you don't want to skimp on fat. You just like, like I'm not saying to go on a low fat diet. I'm just saying, stop skimping on protein. Um, and, and remember, you know, this, this goes for everybody, but women, you got to remember protein isn't just muscles. I know we think of protein and we, we picture in our head, some huge muscle bound bodybuilder guy on the cover of like a, a, a bodybuilding magazine. Protein isn't just what your muscles are made of. I said before, it's bone. Your hair is protein, your skin, your nails, every um, tendon, every ligament, every blood vessel, enzymes, some hormones, not all hormones are made out of amino acids and proteins, but some hormones are. Um, antibodies that your immune system uses, all of these are made of amino acids and or proteins. And getting back to the nails, you don't know how many women have told me that, you know, all their life they had brittle nails, weak nails that were soft and broke easily, and they increased their protein intake, and now all of a sudden they've got these long, strong, healthy nails. Protein, ladies. <laughs> now, I do have some specific recommendations for protein, but before I get to that, I said stick a pin. I do want to cover the fact that there are cases in which protein management, I won't say restriction, but protein management, a little more attention to, to the amount of protein might be warranted. And those are conditions where the, the actual ketone level might be significant. So that's not really the case with fat loss. It's not the case with re reversing type two diabetes. It's not the case with, you know, getting the fat out of your non-alcoholic fatty liver. It's not the case with I could go on and on. Well, I don't know. Um, it might be the case though with things like epilepsy, which the ketogenic diet was created for. It's not a, a weight loss diet. It was an epilepsy diet. It might matter in things like anxiety or bipolar or schizophrenia. Um, I did a video on keto and mental health a while back. I'll link to that below. So, you know, there might be some, especially psychological and neurological issues where the ketone level itself is playing a major role apart from the the normalization of blood sugar and insulin levels and like less in, inflammation and all that so i'm i'm not saying that everybody should increase protein and that it never has any adverse effect ever it's just i i get the feeling that most of you watching my videos are in the weight loss, diabetes, obesity, PCOS, metabolic type camp. So if you're not though, I've just covered these other situations where it might, um, it might be an issue now. Okay. Before I give my protein recommendations, I just want to be clear because this is, um, sort of standard like everybody knows information to me, but very often I realize, oh, pe people don't understand and I have to clear this up. What I'm talking about is when I talk about grams of protein, I'm talking about grams of protein, not grams of food by weight on a food scale. So for example, one large egg might weigh, I don't know, 35 to 50 grams, the, the weight of the egg, but it provides about seven grams of protein. A, you know, a three, three and a half ounce or so, hundred gram, a hundred gram chicken breast, like that weighs a hundred grams by weight, provides about 30 something grams of protein. So don't confuse the weight of a protein food on a food scale with the grams of protein. A general rule of thumb, although it is not always accurate, just general ballpark, is that for every ounce of a food, of a protein rich food, there's about seven grams of protein. So for every ounce of fish or every ounce of beef or pork or whatever, 
egg, egg too, I guess, for every ounce by weight, which an ounce I think is about 28 grams, 28 to 30 grams. So for that weight on a food scale, it's about seven grams of protein. My protein recommendation right now might blow your mind, but I hope you are not going to be afraid to do it for all of the reasons we just went through. No, it's not bad for your kidneys. No, it's not bad for your bones. No, it doesn't spike insulin. No, it doesn't automatically turn into sugar. It's not like you just, you know, drank a thing of orange juice if you ate a big steak. Um, and what else? For some people, it will be more satiating. So I hope that you are not afraid of this anymore. My recommendation first, if you are, car now again, this applies only to if you feel like you need a change, if you feel like your keto or low carb diet needs a little shake up. If your current approach is eating about 60 grams of protein or fewer, meaning if you are 60 grams or under most days, double it. Double your protein intake. Yes, that means 80 grams, 90 grams, 100 grams, 110, 120 grams. Yes, double your protein intake if you are under 60 grams a day, and I would say especially if you're under 50. Now, if you don't exactly double it, if you don't hit it, that's fine. My point is increase it substantially. And all that really means is having a bigger portion. Instead of that stupid nonsensical deck of cards, have two decks of cards. Instead of that dumb palm sized portion, have your whole hand, have two or three palms. It's okay to eat food, ladies. It's okay to put food in your mouth. It's okay to put fatty, juicy, red meat in your mouth. I know we've been conditioned against it. I know, oh, I'll just take the egg white omelet. Oh, I'll have the salad with grilled chicken and dressing on the side. Oh, I'll just, it's, it's unladylike to rip into a big fatty steak, right? It's unfeminine. To... No, it's not. We've got to let this cultural baggage go. Red meat loaded with iron, most of you, well, not most, many of you are probably a little low on the iron and the zinc and the B12 and all the other awesome stuff that red meat provides. If you don't want to eat red meat, eat poultry, eat fish, eat eggs, eat pork. If you're kosher or halal and you don't eat pork, eat the other stuff. Eat whatever suits you, just more protein. And so now, if, uh, <laughs> so again, what that means is just a big, a nice big chunk of protein. If you're normally eating three ounces, think about four to six ounces or more if you're hungry. I, we've been so conditioned to fast and fast and fast. At some point you have to eat. You got to put food in your system at some point. And so don't, you know, if, if you're, if you're only doing two meals a day, and especially if you're doing one meal a day and do it. I don't love one meal a day for women, especially young women. I don't love it. I maybe talk about that some other time, but if you're eating one meal a day, you better be chowing down on some honking big piece of protein. You better be having like a 10 ounce steak. You better be having a huge pork chop or, you know, a small steak and a bunch of eggs or a whole pile of shrimp and cod and tilapia, whatever. Um, you know, if you're only eating once a day, you've got to get a lot of protein in that meal. Two meals a day, it's less per meal, but still a pretty sizable portion per meal. This doesn't have to be every single day. I think it's very unnatural for anyone to eat the same exact amount every day, which is another reason I don't believe in macros. What if, what if you're not that hungry one day? Should you eat a certain, even the grams? Does, if you're not hungry, should you eat? X grams of fat, X grams of protein, if you're not hungry. So follow your signals, but you know, err on the side of more protein, but just don't worry about getting this exact every day. It doesn't have to be that way. Another way to think about this is something that I'm totally stealing from Ted Naiman, but since I'm giving him credit, it's not really stealing. It's um, sharing with you knowledge I've gained from him. So um, I really, really adore Dr. Naaman. He's a keto-friendly doctor out of the Seattle area. And um, 
I'll, I'll, I'll link to his site, and he he's recently came out with a book that talks a lot about the leveraging protein in your diet and like what a, what a huge benefit, how many good things cascade when you increase the protein. Even if you're not on a low carb or ketogenic diet, increasing protein intake has a lot of good stuff going on. And I'll maybe I'll do some videos about that in the future. But Dr. Naiman's recommendation, you, are you sitting down? Are you... Are you like, you're not going to fall over when you hear this, right? He recommends as a ballpark, again, this doesn't have to be exact, as a ballpark, one gram of protein per pound of your desired body weight. Think about that for a second. If you, I don't care what your weight is now. If you weigh 314 pounds now, but your goal weight is 150 pounds, then your protein intake should be about 150 grams a day. And remember, that's not 150 grams of protein food by weight. It's 150 grams of protein. That's a lot. Not only is that kind of a lot of protein, it's probably way more protein than you're eating now. And for men, I would say men, you could lowball it a little bit because let's say, let's say you're a man that weighs, you know, 400 pounds starting out and your goal weight is 200. 200 grams of protein is a lot of protein. But, um, so if you fall short, let's say you get to 170 or 180, that's still probably a lot more protein than you're eating now. And you could probably get just as good results getting closer to that than you don't have to nail that 200. Or your goal weight could be 220. Let's say you're six foot three. You know, you, you're you going to have some meat on your bones. Like, um, you know, your protein intake isn't going to be 100 grams a day. It might be 200, and that might be perfectly suitable for a guy your size. So women, if that shocks you or maybe even scares you a little bit, just read through those blog posts, watch Ben Bickman's video. But the reason, the reason I would recommend that for women as a ballpark, the, the one gram per pound is number one, it's easy. It's easy to remember. The classical recommendation for protein is what? Some of you may know this, some of you don't. 0 0.8 grams per kilogram of your body weight. So now those of us in America, we got to like, calculate to kilograms and then it's 0 0.8 it's not even a one for one you gotta like do all this math not not that like it's that you whip out your phone you do the calculator but it's just harder to figure it out and some people will say it's 0 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of your total body weight some people say it's 0 0.8 grams per kilogram of your lean body mass so then you gotta like figure out your lean body mass it's a nightmare so i love that dr Naiman has made it dead simple one gram of protein per pound of your desired body weight, not your not your current weight. Um, so I would say if you're someone that wants to gain weight, maybe eat more, eat more than that. You know, it's um, it's it's OK to go over that if you need to or you want to. And and I, so the, the reason that I not only is it simple, um, at least in America, if you're in, you know, overseas, like outside the U.S., then you'll have to calculate what that is. You know, maybe your weight in kilograms, you'll have to translate to pounds. It's just if you're kilograms, you multiply by 2.2, you get the pounds. If you're pounds, you divide by 2.2, you get the kilos. That is not right there. Um, the second reason I like the, that recommendation specifically for women is because you're probably never going to get there. If your goal weight is 120 pounds, you're probably not going to eat 120 grams of protein, especially if you're currently eating like 60 or 70, you're probably not going to get to 120, but you might get to hundred. You might get to 98 grams of protein and that increase, that bump might be enough to to change you to start getting the results that you want to get that you haven't been getting all this time you've been limiting protein. So um, it would be great if you do get to that protein amount, like that'd be great. I, I don't think there's any harm in it. And if, like, I would encourage you to try. But if you don't, again, just thinking about, oh, I'm, I'm supposed to be eating like 130 grams of protein or 115 grams of protein or 140, whatever your you know ideal weight is, that having that alone, that thought like, oh, I'm like 
supposed to like which is a little loaded but you know oh i i could i could eat as much as 130 you're never gonna get there but you'll have it in your mind that you need a lot more than you've been getting so far and i'm almost 35 minutes in i said i was going to make shorter videos I guess this is shorter than some of my longer videos, but it's not as short as I'd like to make things in the future. But I, I said what I had to say, and I don't want to make short videos and shortchange you. Why do I want to make a video that's 10 minutes that provides no educational value? Like I, what is the point of that? Um, let me just check in the notes to make sure I didn't forget anything major. Yeah, don't don't kid yourself. It's okay to eat. A big chunk of protein. Ben Bickman's video will just mesmerize you. You could probably double your protein intake, especially if you work out, if you lift weights, if you do CrossFit. Um, well, CrossFit's a whole nother ball of wax. You could actually increase your carb intake there, but let's not even talk about that right now. Um, yeah. I don't, I really normally discourage tracking of food and weighing and measuring and all that because it just drives people crazy. But if you're already tracking, pay more attention to the protein. And I would have people track not so much to stay under some calorie limit or some macros, but track to make sure you're getting enough protein, right? Always keep those carbs low, but start paying attention to the increasing the protein. All right, that's it. I'm going to have to look at my list of upcoming topics and see if I can actually manage to do any of them in like 15 or 16 or 18 minutes. Thank you for watching. Do check out all the links, check out the books, check out the Adapt Your Life Keto Made Simple Masterclass. Um, my website is www.toitnutrition.com. There's a link below. I always, I have to say the www now because you may have heard in previous videos, there's just glitch with my website right now that if you don't put www if you just put to nutrition.com you'll get that stupid 404 error so that's all thank you for watching if you enjoy my videos subscribe i also have patreon if you want to support my work if you want to help me keep making these videos um check out the patreon you can help out for as little as two dollars a month but for higher tiers you get certain perks including videos that are exclusive only for pat for patrons. I was going to say for Patreons, but it's for patrons. Um, other than that, I think that's it. All right. I will see you next time. Take care.